Hi everybody, this is the Flat Cap Cafe Racer. I'm out riding the FTR 1200 today on the review. I got Mr. Bill. You want to say something, Mr. Bill? Hey everybody, how's it going today? It's a beautiful day in smoky Idaho. And he's referring to the smoke that we're getting from our Canadian friends. Come around here, Mr. Bill. What are you riding there today, Jerry? I'm riding the Indian FTR 1200 carbon fiber. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't see my brake lights? Yeah, show me those brake lights. Oh my gosh, you're blinding me. <laughs> <laughs> what do those uh, turn signals look like? And I'll give you one right after I get through this light. Okay. There's one. Oh boy, that's nice. So we're going to take this out for a little spin today. And uh, as I've probably already mentioned, I'm going to do a little comparison with the uh, Thruxton RS from Triumph because uh, spec-wise, they're a lot of a lot of ways they're very similar and there are some differences and i'll try to point those out as we go along so today i've set the bike up with all the the preload and compressions and uh, rebound dampening on the front to middle way and on the rear i've got the compression and rebound halfway and the preload is just what it was from the from Indian and I'm running in the road mode um, because yesterday I was coming back from the motorcycle shop in the sport mode and I noticed it was kind of lurching in a little bit uh, at 20 miles an hour in first gear uh, between 2000 and 2200 rpm was it uh was it the fact that you're uh, not used to the throttle, or are you saying no, it was I'm like steady, surging? steady throttle, but it is very, the throttle is very sensitive to bumps. You hit a bump, you know, it'll, it's kind of, it'll get a little jerky a little bit. So you were getting a little bit of a surge. Yeah, getting a little surge there. Not, I don't know if that was attributed to the sport mode and, and the throttle being very sensitive or, or what, but maybe maybe part of the warm-up that the uh, salesman was telling yeah, us about it, they are very cold-blooded to motorcycles uh, this one I think they vary from motorcycle to motorcycle this one's not too bad on, on being cold-blooded uh, I did when I did pull away from the shop yesterday it did die on me just you know, about 20 feet but oh it's warmed, it's warmed up pretty good it's got a couple hundred miles on it so it's not brand new but it's same as brand new this is a 2023 and I, like I said I'll be running in the road mode here today uh, just to see if that you know like right here it's 30 miles an hour it's okay uh, let's stay in this lane Mr. Bill well we'll put it out here and um, on the interstate and get some rain grooves out here I'm kind of curious about that on the, the tires they are uh, actually this it's 17 inch tires uh, it's got a 120 70 on the front and a 180 55 on the back looks like a Michelin sport tech M M something R R no, I can't tell if it's, it's an a M9 or I, yeah it's a, what did I, I say I think it's a Metzler isn't it oh it's, it is you said Michelin it is a Metzler sport tech it does have cruise control on it uh, has a very nice looking dash. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, you can see uh, RPMs, it's showing speed and RPMs as being analog on here with a TFT, fuel gauge, clock, and a gear. Yeah, and I can read it pretty easy. Uh, I'll show you some pictures as we're going along here that I've taken and I'll show you on the comparison on the ergonomics what it looks like compared to my my Thruxton R. My Thruxton R has basically the same uh, ergonomics as the RS so this it'd be the same. 
but uh, what you'll see is there's a little bit about uh, three quarters of an inch more distance on the seat height from the seat to the peg but there's there's about three quarters of a distance from the seat to the foot peg higher on this bike than it is on the Thruxton. However, the Thruxton has about three quarters of an inch more ground clearance from the peg to the ground. And if you look at the picture I'm going to show you, to show you with a Thruxton, you notice that the arm position is a little bit lower than it is on this bike. Which this has got handlebars, so there's, you know, first the, the clip on it. The uh, back position, I'm a little bit straighter up, I think. And for the feet, um, on the Thruxton R, the foot pegs are a little bit farther to the rearward piece. One of the things I noticed when I first got on a bike, that you always notice, is how easy or how hard is that the foot peg, I mean the kickstand to bring up. Some foot uh, kickstands are hard to find, this one's not hard to find, but what makes it really hard to use the kickstand is the fact that you got to go behind the foot peg to get it started, then bring it forward of the foot peg to kick it out. So the foot peg actually interferes with deploying the kickstand. Yeah, and it's grabbing your pant leg. So that's that's a that's a little uh, that's a little that's a little bit aggravating. It feels like when I'm in a road mode, it's a little it's a lot smoother on the throttle. When I'm hitting the bumps, it's not quite as jumpy as it is in the sport mode. So I think it's perfectly fine. The the, the shifting on the transmission is good. Uh, it doesn't, it's not hard to find neutral. And uh, that, that part of it I like pretty good. The seat's a little hard, uh, but it's, it's, it's comfortable so far. I don't have any issues with it. All right, I'm picking up to about 70 miles an hour. It's about 4,000 RPMs on this bike. Uh, it doesn't have you can feel there. Uh, you can feel it's got a motor on it, but the, the vibration's not. It's not intrusive uh, to me at all. I'd say it's a little bit more in a Tiger, but like I'm going around here and I'm changing. If I change a hand position, it, it, the bike immediately slows up okay I'll put out some of the specs on the bikes in comparison with the Thruxton RS and you can see you know gas tank wiser this is a little bit smaller gas tank it's about 3.4 gallons and I'll show you I'll talk about some of those specs you're sitting a little bit above the bike because uh, you're probably got a little bit this is a uh, got a longer wheelbase than the Thruxton R, but it's got a greater rake and greater trail. But despite having more rake and trail on it, it actually feels like you can change directions a little bit quicker. And I think it's to do to these handlebars and where your weight is. The rain grooves that didn't affect the bike at all. It's got a nice little thing on the instruments that tells you you you're doing um, like we're heading east at 85 degrees. So that's pretty cool. It's got a little. Yeah, I think it's a, there's a touch. You can do it by touch, but there's also a little flicker button over here, and I just flicked it 
to that and they'll show you I don't know if I can show you you guys can see it on the camera or not but right in here it's now it's showing me the the speed the gear I'm in and the direction I'm heading and the road I'm heading on now I'm sure that you have to have some sort of app to program it um, so you can Bluetooth it to your helmet but I'm not that familiar I don't have the owner's manual on that and it's got a uh, the gearing on the bike itself it's geared a little bit lower than the Thruxton R it's got a 17 front uh, tooth front sprocket compared to the 16 but it's got a 45 tooth rear sprocket compared to the Thruxton R 42 so it's nearly the same but it's still geared just a little bit lower so the advertised top speed on this bike is 124 miles an hour and of course with the Thruxton RS it's probably 130 miles an hour and I think some of the differences in weight uh, this one weighs 486 pounds dry and uh, which is about 204 or 5 kilos I think and the Thruxton RS is 197 uh, kilos dry so there's there's a few pounds difference maybe 30 pounds difference in the bikes uh, the, with this one being a little bit heavier the rear suspension is a it's a, it has one shock it's kind of offset to the right a little bit but it's underneath the seat and to the swing arm it's kind of unique looking swing arm but I think I, when I did some adjusting I think it did some, some good to this because I think to me the, the, the front forks when I took it home I hit a bump and you could feel like it was against the bump stop you know right now it feels pretty good Thing, uh, this clutch cable here it looks like it's fouling on the uh, the instrument the TFT is rubbing up against it like Mr. Bill Mr. Bill pointed it out when we started out it looks like it's run, rubbing up against it a little bit it's, it's already left a little mark on it so that's not really good right here is what we're seeing which rubbing up against there around the bike a little bit yesterday I saw that uh, the oil filters right underneath the bike so it's pretty easy access to get to uh, the adjustments on all the suspension components are very easy to do um, what I did notice is the seats gonna be a bear to take off um, it looks like it's got at least two bolts holding the seat on maybe four I didn't get around to doing that. I will do that. In reality, the only thing that's holding the seat on is as, it put, as you push up into here. The, of course, it, it's got the little hooks there underneath the seat. But what happens is you've got this screw that goes into those little that little metal bracket. So it only has two screws. That you have to t take out however because the handhold is here blocks the access to those two screws so you have to take that out first you have to take the handhold off to get to those two screws so these are uh, on these uh, you need a t40 and on this you need a six but you know the uh, it's got mag wheels so it's tubeless tires so that's a lot of people prefer tubeless tires uh, to me it doesn't make a difference in either way I mean I mean, if you have a flat it does but only if you got the stuff to fix the flat <laughs> if you're running tubeless tires and you you don't have the stuff to fix the flat it doesn't really make any difference you're calling somebody to come pick you up it looks like the uh, oil filter is on the right side it's got looks like it's got a little stick dipstick to it we did notice that uh, the, like most bikes nowadays the front fender is doesn't extend nearly far enough down 
so you're gonna in the wet you're gonna throw up a lot of stuff on your engine if nothing else and on the rear uh, the rear mud flap really doesn't do a lot of good you're gonna have a lot of stuff flown back towards your rear shock also because it's there's not enough I'm sure there's some uh, add-on things that you can you know like every other bike that you can get fender extenders and such for things like that it's got a pretty unique uh, I'll show you the headlight and um, Mr. Bill showed you the tail light just brake light while ago they're pretty bright the mirrors are good for me uh, I suspect if you're a, a bigger fellow than I am that uh, you may not see much around your shoulders so you may need some extensions the brakes feel really good they're uh, actually a little, a little bit bigger than the Thruxton brakes they're Brembo they're uh, 320 millimeter rotors in the front versus the Thruxton RS is 310 and it's a little bit bigger in the back by about 10 millimeters also this bike is kind of unique that it does have an oil cooler and is water cooled. They got a little, it's got a little joystick here that you can maneuver also um, to get some different screens. And it's pretty easy to use. Um, it's not like the Triumph one in the fact <coughs> that the joystick is really closer to the the blinker. So that can be a little bit of uh, confusing to people until you get used to it. It's got a little bit higher compression ratio than the Thruxton RS. It does have good engine braking. But the problem with good engine braking sometimes is that the really sensitive to it. If you hit bumps, then it makes it harder to ride smooth. But I guess you do have the, you got the cruise control set right over here on the left hand, which is where it should be on the left hand side, BMW. Uh, <laughs> the Hooter, it's normal Hooter, you can, oh I can hear yours better. <laughs> it does have a little port here uh, for your, you plug in, for your, for charge up your phone or your GoPro or something like that. Yeah, it's a USB port. It's got LED lighting. Uh, uh, it does not have an adjustable clutch lever, which would have been nice. Because at the price point, there's several different models of this that you can get, different ranges. So, and it's kind of like the Thruxton RS, depends on how you get it outfitted and how much it's going to cost. But they're relatively. Uh, would be the same uh, in pricing, I think. I would expect to have an adjustable clutch lever, though. The brake lever is somewhat adjustable with this. It does have it does have a key, which is really good. I really like having motorcycle keys, not key, key fobs. All right, we're going to pull over here just in a minute. We're going to do a little walk around on this bike and show you what it looks like. Uh, it's pretty lovely. I like it, but uh, you know, I'm not a real big carbon fiber guy. Uh, but you can get this in painted colors, and there's some, some stunning uh, colors that you can get this. Thruxton R or the RS, and you're going to love this because it's, cool. it's a little bit more comfortable than the Thruxton R or the Thruxton RS. Uh, so you might come down to a decision between this and a Speed Twin. 
And I think you ought to give the FTR 1200 a look because it's a marvelous bike. And uh, you have to stay tuned for my next video to see what kind of new bike I get. Black Cat Cafe Ridge out for today. You know, I went through the motorcycle. It's a pretty little bit lengthy review, but I give you the, the nits and picks and, and the pros and the cons of how I saw that motorcycle. And to be honest with you, I think I really like the, the Indian brand in that, uh, and I really particularly like the FTR. I don't know if it came across or not. It's, uh, I'll give you a lot of statistics and stuff, but I really, it's really a fun bike to ride, and that's probably the most important thing, is to put a smile on your face, and it did put a smile on my face. I just want to thank them for letting me use this bike, taking it out, and giving it a spin, and giving my thoughts on the reviews on it. Uh, Brad and James and Tony and Hunter and all of them, real good folks to deal with, and uh, I do highly recommend this dealership. Join me and my friends at Flat Cap Cafe Racer for riding and racing. Please subscribe.